As Heather said, I'm Rachel Patton with Preserve Arkansas. It's good to see all of you here today, many familiar faces. We're going to talk about a little bit about Preserve Arkansas first and then about Arkansas's most endangered list. Preserve Arkansas was founded in 1981 as the Historic Preservation Alliance of Arkansas. We are the statewide nonprofit advocate for historic preservation, and we achieve our mission through advocacy, education, and technical assistance. I feel like that our most important role is as an advocate for preservation uh, because we partner with the State Historic Preservation Office in that way many times, as well as other local preservation organizations. If you want to learn more about what preservation in Arkansas is all about, what's going on, what does Preserve Arkansas do, then I would like to invite you to attend our annual membership meeting, which will be on Wednesday, October 16th in Stiff Station at the new Stones Throw Brewing Tap Room from 5.30 to 7. And you can RSVP on our website, preservearkansas.org. This event is for members of our organization. We are a 501c3 nonprofit, and we do have members. That's how we get our support. And so you're welcome to come if you're a member or if you're a prospective member. If you're interested, then we won't turn you away. So come and see us on October 16th. I wanted to tell you about two upcoming events besides that, just very quickly. Our Preservation Ramble is going to Camden this year on Saturday, November the 2nd. And tickets are on sale now at PreserveArkansas.org. And then our Dollars and Cents program will be in downtown Conway on Friday, December the 6th. And this is a half-day program at the UCA downtown building. And it focuses on the economic benefits of historic preservation and financial incentives for the rehabilitation of historic buildings. Okay, our Most Endangered Places program is one of our most effective and important advocacy tools. We started this list in 1999, so this year marks the 20th year of Most Endangered Places in Arkansas, and our list is modeled after the list that the National Trust for Historic Preservation has been putting out since the mid-1980s. They do it America's 11 Most Endangered Places every year, and most statewide historic preservation nonprofits put out a similar list as well. So look at our pie chart. We don't do awesome. Um, we can do a lot better. There's a lot more room for improvement. There are about 141, I think, last time I counted, on the list, 141 places. But there's really more places than that on the list because 141 counts multiple <coughs> property listings, like African American cemeteries statewide, that's one listing on our list. So that's really hundreds of historic properties. Or the Central High Historic District, which is a thousand properties, okay? So there are really many more on the list, but we're trying to update all of our information going back over the last 20 years. And if you were here last year, whenever I talked about the most endangered places list, we were just starting this effort. And so this past spring, we had an intern from UAM in Monticello who helped us to update the portion of the list of properties in the 4th Congressional District. And so we have that part updated with you know, current status. Has it been destroyed? Is it still endangered? Has it been saved? Photographs of the property, the current owner and their contact information, and then a 200-word-ish thumbnail history or a statement of significance about that particular place. And that was that intern's project. And this, this semester, we have an intern from UCA working to update a portion of the District 2 list. So hopefully we'll continue to have interns help us with this and get everything updated and give you more accurate figures. But about half of the places that have been on the list, to my knowledge, are still endangered. A little more than a quarter have been saved. And then we've lost about 15%. And then the saved slash endangered, that yellow chunk is about 10% of the graph. And that, and you'll see an example of that later on in my presentation, but this is for those larger multiple property listings or historic districts where there's been a lot of progress, but there's still much more work to be done. 
So the setting to save, this was the 2019 list, which we announced in May of this year. And when we do the press conference and announcement each year, the main goal is to raise awareness of these places. Sometimes people don't even know that these places exist. So to let our Kansans know of these important historic sites that are here in our state, and then to let them know that they're endangered and see, and also to try to initiate conversations to try to save these places and come up with a plan for what to do next. The Adler Building, this is in downtown Batesville in Northeast Arkansas. The Adler Building was built in 1881 by Jewish merchant Simon Adler, and it housed commercial, commercial businesses on the first floor, and the second floor was home to a federal courtroom at one time before they had a federal building built in Batesville. It was also an opera hall, you know, dances upstairs um, for many years. But for the majority of its life, this building housed wholesale grocery and dry goods businesses. And then for the last probably 25 years at least, it's been in bad shape. It's been deteriorating for a long time. So it had a new owner as of a couple years ago, and the gentleman was really gung-ho about getting this building rehabilitated, but the back wall collapsed. Right about the time that he was finishing up with getting all his financing in order with the local bank. And so whenever the back wall fell in February 2018, that stopped all discussions on financing, and he was left with, really, he didn't know what to do. So they were able to stabilize the building um, to keep it from falling down all the rest of the way, and then it was placed on the most endangered list. But this is the inside of the upstairs. The good news, the update on this one, this is just as of a couple weeks ago, uh, Main Street Batesville had called and told me that in a last ditch effort, I mean everybody thought this building was a goner, that they were going to apply for this grant for the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development through their Hope 6 Main Street program, and they got it, which is so awesome. So they got Main Street Batesville and then a little town west of Oklahoma City called Thomas, Oklahoma. They each got $500,000 from this HUD grant program, this cycle, and those are the only two grant awards. So it's really great. This grant program is something good for everybody to know about in the state. It's for cities of less than 50,000 people that have fewer than 100 affordable housing units, and you have to have an established Main Street revitalization effort already going on. So this was perfect. And it's going to be affordable housing upstairs, which is what they wanted to do originally. Um, the new owner wanted to have apartments up there, so that's going to happen. And then two commercial spaces on the ground floor. The Chu Building was built about 1915. This is on Front Street in Forest City, which if you've been to Forest City, you'll know that there are not many commercial buildings left on Front Street. They've lost a whole lot. And this is one of the oldest ones still standing. The Chu Building is important for its association with Chinese immigration to the Arkansas Delta and also with the African American history associated with this building. So it was owned by a Chinese family, the Chus, who leased one side to another Chinese family, the Hows, and they had on one side, you can still see the Hows cash grocery sign on the west side of that building. The house had a cash grocery on the west side, and on the east side, they leased it to the Harlem Theater, which was an African-American theater during the era of segregation. And this building, you can still see the pretty pressed tin ceiling is up there above the drop ceiling. Um, this building was given to the St. Francis County Historical Society with the stipulation that they do something to advance the cause of history and culture in the Delta. So, they're currently fundraising, and they want to turn this into a multicultural museum and archives facility. This is the Emmett United Methodist Church. This is in southwest Arkansas, about halfway between Hope and Prescott. And this church is so precious, built in 1917. And, you know, it looks really great from this picture. Um, but there's been some deferred maintenance over the years, that series of complicated flat roofs um, has not been good. They haven't maintained the drainage system very well. So that's the inside. It's gorgeous. They still meet there. 
Okay, so you can see on the on the wall here where that should have had a drainage pipe, you know, gutters coming down and taking the water away from the building, but those have long been gone. And so right above that, water has gone, has run in that spot for so long that it's gone down between the brick and the wall. And so it's gone all the way down and rotted the floor joists in several places, all the way around the building. And so there's definitely a desperate need for those to be checked out, the roof to be repaired, and for the brick to be repointed because you can kind of pull it out in some of those places, all the mortar's gone, but they just got to create it. From the Arkansas Historic Preservation Program, at the end of June, they announced that the Emmett Church was the recipient of a $31,000 grant to do all of those things I just mentioned. The Scipio Africanus Jones House in Little Rock, boy, this one has been interesting. Um, this house is on Cross Street in the Dunbar Neighborhood Historic District, and it's significant for its association with African-American attorney and civic leader Scipio Jones, who you may have read about recently because everyone has been talking about the 100th anniversary of the Elaine Race Massacre, and Scipio Jones is, is best known for defending the Elaine 12, who were convicted and sentenced to death for their role in the Elaine Race Massacre. He got them, he freed, they were free because of him. So this house was built in 1928, and he lived here until his death in 1943. As you can see, it's seen better days. Um, the porch is enclosed, that's no big deal. Um, but the roof's in really bad shape, and the worst problem, that picture you can see, the back, the back portion of the house with that second story, it's really a great craftsman-style house, but it hasn't been well secured over the years, so there have been people squatting in here for a long time, and it's pretty trashed. And I picked a picture that was the least offensive to show you of the inside of the house. Um, but you get the idea. So we've been working with who we, well, with the owner of record, who a gentleman bought this house in the spring from the Commissioner of State Lands for back taxes. So that's who we've been dealing with, trying to get what he wanted to sell it. So we've been trying to help him sell it. And there have been a lot of people that we've talked to who wanted to buy this thing. And as of a couple weeks ago, the Arkansas Attorney General filed a lawsuit against that gentleman for committing for fraud. And they've been fraudulent deeds. I mean, yeah, it's bad. So this house, we're still trying to figure out what needs to happen to get this house into the right hands um, because he is the owner. I checked with the AG's office and the Commissioner of State Lands even this week. Since he did pay a few hundred dollars in taxes, he is the owner, even though he signed the deed's name with a person who is deceased. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's interesting. But we're still working on this one. The Malvern Rosenwald School. The Malvern Rosenwald School was built in 1928, and this was part of the Julius Rosenwald funded schools uh, built in Arkansas for African Americans. At one time, we had about 400. Rosenwald Fund buildings in Arkansas, and now there are fewer than 20 in existence. And this one, the roof is in terrible, terrible shape. It needs urgent attention. And this was the black school in Malvern until 1952 when they built another high school. And it's been in use up until the early 2000s, but since then it's been empty. And there's been a nonprofit for years that has tried to work to do something with this school, and they've kind of fizzled out, and then they have new energy from some new people in town um, who are interested in the school, and they're working with the, the older nonprofit, and so they got it on the most endangered places list, and they're starting to fundraise again, and we're all hoping that they'll be able to raise enough money to apply for a grant through AHPP. What's the name of the organization trying to apply for the grant? I think it's called the Malvern, or maybe it's the Tuggle School Restoration Organization because it was called Tuggle Elementary later on. They're a non-profit corporation. They're a non-profit. How far is it from downtown Melbourne? What direction? It's southwest across the railroad tracks. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, this is the inside of the cafeteria. And you can see they put that drop ceiling in so you can't see the entire window, the window bays, but all the Rosenwald schools had lots of windows for natural light. See the stage up front. 
This is the Mount Olive Missionary Baptist Church and Cemetery in Phillips County. It's just straight south of Marble on county roads. And this church is very important to the Mount Olive community. The Fellowship Hall portion that's across the back was actually built in 1954 first, and that was the school. That was the Mount Olive School. And then they built the sanctuary toward the front in 1957. And this all replaced an earlier church on that same site. And it's very important to them, but they lack financial resources and their congregation is shrinking in size. So they nominated themselves to the list to try to get resources and information about how to save this church. The cemetery has many historic burials. It's still an active burial ground but they've got all kinds of foundation issues with this church. And the Sanger Theater in downtown Pine Bluff, this building built in 1924, is one of the most architecturally significant buildings in downtown Pine Bluff or in Pine Bluff period, um, built by the Sanger Amusement Company. And this is one of the last great theater show places um, in Arkansas. This and the Rialto Theater in El Dorado are the two that I think of that are really of that stature. Whenever this opened, it could seat 1,500 people. And everyone from Southeast Arkansas went to the Sanger to see shows and movies. This one has also had some efforts, some restoration efforts mounted. And it actually, by the mid-90s, there was a nonprofit organization that had it fixed up enough. They'd gotten one grant to repair the roof from the State Historic Preservation Office and they had bought a new movie screen and they had a you know a new curtain and all these things and they actually had a film festival in here from 95 till 2008 and then it got to where they couldn't they just couldn't swing it anymore financially and so it sat empty for a few years and then in 2012 they gave it to the city of Pine Bluff. they got a second grant to fix the roof and so the roof's in good shape but as you can see and there's no electricity, that's why the pictures are so dark on the inside. There's another one. They've, they've had trouble keeping vandals out of the building, so that's one problem. The other problem is there's still water infiltration, but it's coming from below somehow. And nobody's really sure where it's coming from, so we've got to figure out how to address that. But there's hope that the Go Forward Pine Bluff group, Pine Bluff Rising, the nonprofits that are trying to do something with Pine Bluff downtown will incorporate this into their plan. It's definitely one of their priority buildings. Okay, and then quickly I wanted to go through a couple places uh, that you all will recognize probably. Uh, some places that were on our list in the past and that have been successful saves uh, through the partnership of many organizations beyond Preserve Arkansas. But these were all places that were on our most endangered list at one point in time. The Johnny Cash Boyhood Home at Dias, uh, whenever this was placed on the list, it was in private ownership and in a deteriorated state. And now, as you probably know, it's been acquired by Arkansas State University and through their Heritage Sites program and many grants from the Arkansas Natural and Cultural Resources Council. It's a huge tourist attraction in Northeast Arkansas. The Rower Japanese American Relocation Center Cemetery in Southeast Arkansas. This was on the most endangered list along with the Jerome site. Uh, these two sites were the sites of the easternmost Japanese American Relocation Centers during World War II. And the cemetery is all that remains at Rower. And these monuments have been vandalized and they deteriorated, but through grants, from the National Park Service, Japanese American Confinement Sites Program. They've been restored with the help of UALR, and the Butler Center has some of their, has some of their documents and artwork, and uh, ASU and the U of A Fayetteville have all contributed to the restoration of this site. The Springfield Desert Bridge. This bridge, I should have put a picture, a before picture of this one on there, because um, it's really dramatic before and after. <laughs> But this bridge was built in 1872, the oldest bridge in Arkansas, and it used to be over Cadron Creek, and it looked like it could not be saved. You definitely couldn't go across it. 
Um, and it was through the effort of the Faulkner County Historical Society, Faulkner County, and the city of Conway, they enlisted the help of a historic bridge restoration company from Iowa called Working Bridges. And they moved this thing from Cabin Creek to Lake Beaver Fork, just north of Conway. And it's been fully restored, and it's now in use as a pedestrian bridge. The Woodman of the Union Building, this is on Malvern Avenue in Hot Springs. And we've listed all of downtown Hot Springs on the most endangered list in the past, as well as individual buildings that are more significant landmarks in Hot Springs. And this one was in a deteriorated state for a long time. This 1923 building is the last of the African-American bathhouses in Hot Springs. It had a big entertaining space upstairs that hosted all kinds of well-known music acts back in the day. And this was privately rehabilitated using the federal historic tax credit and the low-income housing tax credit. And it's now uh, low-income housing still. The Thompson Building. This one, in my opinion, was kind of the, the one that really turned the tide after the Majestic fire, after the Majestic Hotel burned in 2014. Um, the Thompson Building was redone a couple of years ago, and this was a big project, and is now a boutique hotel and restaurant. The Helena High School Building, a similar story to some of these others I've mentioned. Wouldn't have thought that it could be saved, like covered in kudzu and a huge hole in the roof, um, but rehabbed with the Federal Historic Tax Credit and Low Income Housing Tax Credit, and it's now housing. The Mosaic State Temple, uh, and I'm from Broadway in Little Rock. This is the only original building from the Mosaic Templars of America corner that is left standing, and whenever it was put up for auction a few years ago, everybody was really worried that someone was going to buy that and put in a convenience store or a, some other kind of fast food restaurant because of its location near the interstate on Broadway. Um, but through the advocacy of the, the nonprofit group that's worked with Mosaic Templars for years and the Legislative Black Caucus and Department of Heritage, the state of Arkansas acquired this a few years ago and they have rehabilitated it so it is saved. Successful saves and more work to do. The Central High neighborhood, we've listed the whole neighborhood on the list. Um, we've also done shotgun houses in Central High neighborhood and American Four Squares in Central High neighborhood. And there's been a lot of progress here, but as you know, if you live in Little Rock, a lot of work yet to do. So this is just one house before and after. Kind of hard to believe that's the same house, but it is. Uh, that's at the corner of Daisy Bates and Summit. But more work to do, and this is a recent one that we just were contacted by the homeowner a week or two ago. Uh, this is the Rice Bowman House in the 2000 block of South Battery. This is one that you probably have never known was there, um, but it's on the east side of the street, right where the median is, where the flower garden used to be on South Battery, if you're familiar with that street. And this has a lot of vegetation in front of it, so it's not easy to see from the street. But it was built in 1870. Wow. It is the oldest house in the Central High neighborhood. And whenever it was built, it was literally the only thing out there in that part of the city. And so it's really significant uh, to Little Rock and to that neighborhood. And it's important that we try to help the owner sell it. He wants to sell it and to find a, a new owner who can do right by it. It is significantly deteriorated, though. <coughs> Now. He just moved out. The Loudmore Tourist Home, this is in Russellville. Um, more people are aware of this site and others like it in Arkansas after the movie came out last year, Green Book, because this is one of the few uh, sites in Arkansas that was included in the Negro Motorist Green Book. You see the Russellville listing there, the Loudmore Tourist Home, provided lodging and meals for African Americans during Jim Crow segregation. And this one is in, it's in really bad shape. It's owned by the adjacent church, and we've had many conversations with them, but we're still, still trying to get them to preserve that. The Perry Depot, this is one that we've been very, very involved with. Um, probably two years ago now, we found out that the Little Rock and Western Railroad wanted to demo, uh, wanted to tear down this depot, 
and put a new metal building next to their other metal building um, for a new machine shop. And we were able to get the Perry County Historical and Genealogical Society involved and through a lot of private fundraising, um, they were able to raise enough money to get it moved because that was the only option was to move it. And so it sat on that trailer and this is the new side where it's gonna go in the foreground of the bottom right photo. Well, there was a little flood this summer, uh, but we were successful in getting them a grant through the Rural Development um, Office, through AEDC, and they don't usually give out grants for preservation, but this was for new construction of a community building site or rehabilitation of a community building site, which is what this is going to be used for. So they're going to pay, that grant is going to pay for a new foundation, repair to the floor joists, and to get it moved over to that new site. But then the flood slowed us down a little bit. But the water's gone, and it's fine, the depot's fine, and that fresh load of tons of shale has been brought in uh, to sit where the new site is gonna be and to elevate it. It obviously needs to be elevated, and it's gonna be moved over there hopefully soon. Ponder Drugstore, this is Caddy Corner from Little Rock Central High School, and it was on our list last year. This is a probably 2011-ish photo of the building. The roof had been failing for a long time, and a couple years ago, it just finally pushed enough to pop the bricks out on the 16th Street one day. And so this is, these are photos of it after the roof and all those bricks had been cleaned up. But this is from just a couple weeks ago. They've rebuilt using all the salvaged brick, and they're gonna rehab it with the Federal Historic Tax Credit. I'm not sure what they're going to use it for, but I am hopeful that it's going to get all the way done. It looks good. The Woodruff House, you're probably all familiar with this. It's owned by the Qualcomm Quarter Association, and they've got it all buttoned up and secured and ready to sell, but they need to find a buyer. Fitzgerald Station, this is northeast of downtown Springdale in, in Washington County in northwest Arkansas. And this is significant because the barn at Fitzgerald Station was built in the 1850s and was used during uh, the Butterfield Overland Mail route. And then the house that's still there is 1870s era. But that site was for sale not long ago. And because of its location on a prominent corner near a new subdivision, it was feared that it would be purchased and demoed um, for some other new construction up there. And so it was bought, though, by the Northwest Arkansas Trailblazers Association. And so this private nonprofit does trail building, hiking and biking trails. And they're affiliated with the Walton Family Foundation now because of all their interest in trails. And so they have a lot of money. And they bought this piece of property and a whole bunch of property on the mountain behind it for trails. And then they turned around and gave just the corner parcel to the city of Springdale. So it's going to be, this property is going to be saved and it's going to be rehabilitated. And then downtown Pine Bluff, I've talked about already. I know I'm out of time, I think, or close to maybe. Um, but the bottom right picture I did want to mention in particular, that's in the 300 block of Main Street in Pine Bluff. And that's the last intact commercial block without any holes in it in all of Main Street in downtown Pine Bluff. And that building is really big. You can't see it because of all the trees that are planted, but it's way beyond my camera um, that I took a picture of. And we've been trying to help the Pine Bluff Historic District Commission with this. The owner wants to tear it down, and he owns an antique brick company, so he just wants it for the brick. But we were able to get them pro bono legal counsel through our friends at Mitchell Williams. And we've been fighting with this guy for a year now, and multiple appeals later. Our next court date is October 28th. But we're trying to, to defend their decision to deny uh, his request to demolish this building. So we continue to try to help him climb love. So what are the... What about the Pines Hotel? What's the status of it? The Pines Hotel, I don't have a, a good update for that besides it's it's been all cleared out and they've gotten all the trash and debris out of that thing that were all over the floor that was all over the floor oh, for you. 30 years. Yeah, that helps. You can actually see the floor now. Um, but I don't know that anything else has been done. It's been secured 
they fenced it and boarded the first floor and cleaned it up. But I don't think anything else has happened with it. But the Go Forward group and the Pine Bluff Rising group are interested in doing a full rehabilitation of the Pines Hotel and turning it back into a hotel. That's their intent. But we'll see. I hope so. Oh yeah, I heard somebody say casino. Yeah. Hopefully that'll bring some money down there and they can they can rehab the hotel. So what happens next? What are our next steps for Preserve Arkansas and for anyone else interested in preservation to know? We try to keep in regular contact with the property owners, but that's that's hard to do, but we're gonna do our best to, to continue doing that. And then the intent is to create a searchable database once we get all everything updated through our interns um, so that we can have all of these places listed online to where if anyone is interested in knowing what's on the most endangered list, you can go and look it up and read about it and see what the status is. Um, and so hopefully we're gonna do that. And we've talked about even having the Butler Center host that, that database for us on their website. And then the most major places list, another purpose of it is to help us prioritize our advocacy work throughout the state. And so in other words, we get phone calls every day from people all over the state who want help with their historic properties. But if somebody calls me and they own a property that's been on our most endangered list, I'm gonna make sure I make time for them and I'm gonna work harder on that than I will on some of the other calls just because you have to prioritize what you what you do, you just have to. Um, and then the last thing is try to match properties with appropriate funding sources, different grant programs that we can think of, um, creative financing options, and try to provide technical assistance for them. In other words, if they don't have somebody who has you know, the capacity or the time to write a grant, then I've done grant writing for some of these people. You know, we just, we try to help however we can. Does anybody have any questions? Yes, ma'am. What process do you use to determine when you choose each year the most endangered? How do you make that evaluation? That's a good question. She asked how do we make the determination to whether or not something goes on the list. We put out a call for nominations each spring and ask the public to nominate places to the list, and then we have a selection committee that's different each year, that's made up of members of our board and our membership, Arkansas historians and architects, and somebody from the State Historic Preservation Office, and they review all of the nominations, and based on the level of significance of the property and the level of the threat, the degree of the threat, that they determine whether or not it should be on the list. But there are many places that are endangered, just as endangered as the ones I've shown you, that are not on the list, just because somebody hasn't nominated them. How many nominations do you get during the year? It just depends on the year. And that's why, you know, you saw this year it was seven to save. We try to think of some catchy alliteration for the list each year. Uh, but we try to keep it to 10 or less on the list, but we might get 15 nominations, you might get five, it just depends on the year. Is the War Eagle Bridge stabilized or is it still in danger? It's stabilized, it's fully rehabilitated. Benton County did that a couple years ago and they won a preservation award from us for it. Anybody else? What kind of shape is the Lattimore Tourist Hotel in on the inside? The Lattimore Tourist Home? Yes. It's not in great shape. I think the staircase may have fallen a little bit to one side. The main thing is, is the roof and the front porch. The front porch looks like it's about to separate from the front of the building, and there's some bad spots on the roof. But I haven't been inside. I've just been up close and looked around. Is the church, are they like at all interested in? Um, it depends on who you talk to in the church leadership. It's a hard thing. That's 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 the hard part about dealing with with community engagement. And it's it's vital. You have to engage these people and everybody. 
especially if they're they're the owners of the building, then it's really I mean it's up to them ultimately. But it's something that we would like to see preserved. But for a lot of those church members, that represents a painful part of their history that they don't necessarily want to see and think about. So it's a difficult conversation. What year was the Emmett Church building built? 1917. 17? 17. Did it, what was the historic name of the building at the time it was built? It was probably the Emmett Methodist Church, Methodist Episcopal Church South, I would imagine. Okay. Well, let's go to use the historic name. <laughs> Anybody else? Okay, thank you. Thank you.